Did you know that the majority of those with great ideas for digital products never get beyond the just an idea phase? Usually it comes down to not knowing where to start or feeling like you never just have enough time to even finish it or see it through. In this video, I'm breaking things down into bite-sized steps so that you can go from idea to done just by focusing on that very next step without getting overwhelmed. So if you've got a great idea for a digital product but don't know what to do with it, let's dive in. Welcome back to Your Content Empire, the YouTube channel dedicated to helping you get more consistent and profitable with your content the easy way. I'm your host, Haley Dale, a content and sales funnel strategist obsessed with bringing you all the latest and greatest in content and marketing. Once you've settled on an idea for your next or maybe your first digital product, it's time to get creating it. But I know that's a lot easier said than done. It can feel really overwhelming deciding where to start, what should be in it, and what the end result and product is going to look like. Hello, decision dilemma. And a little side note here, if you're not sure on your topic yet, I covered that in the previous part of this four-part digital product series, which you can go and check out if you don't know what idea to move forward with. In this this step of the process, the actual creation of the digital product, I have a really simple four-part phase process that is going to take you from idea to done and help you end up with a digital product that you are ready to start sharing with the world. So even though it's tempting to get obsessed with, you know, everything that has to get done in this phase, get really overwhelmed, remember to just take it one step at a time and just focus on that very next step in front of you. So long as you have the prerequisite in place, aka a final topic selected. Let's get started. Phase number one is the outlining phase. And because really when it comes down to it, if you fail to plan, then you're planning to fail. The point being that before you fully jump into your journey of creating your digital product, you should have a general idea of what you want that finished product to look like. In this phase, I like to go from general idea to very, very detailed and specific outline, one that makes it really easy to just copy and paste directly into sections of my product. Here's how to get started with your general product idea. Start by answering these five product GPS questions. Number one, what is the desired destination that you want to help your customers arrive at? Number two, what is the most common place that they're starting at? Number three, what is the best way that you know how to navigate someone from point A, where they're starting, to point B? Then what are the waypoints along the way? So the steps that they're going to take. And finally, what are some common roadblocks that might come up or might prevent them from moving forward and completing this. Your answers to these questions can serve as a roadmap if you get lost along the way through the creation process. Getting lost might look like, you know, finding yourself adding more and more unnecessary information to your product, that forgetting what you're trying to help others accomplish, or simply getting overwhelmed on what parts to work on next. So simply reread your answers to these questions anytime you need to set yourself back on course. Then once you have those questions, here is how to create your all the details outline. I like to use the snowflake technique commonly used for writing novels to create my outline, which involves doing multiple passes to expand upon and add increasing amounts of detail. Here's what that looks like. So pass number one, what are my high level steps or milestones that someone will hit or go through when they're using my digital product? Pass number two, for each of these steps, what do they need to do? What do they need to learn or know? And are there any stories or examples that'll make this easier for them to digest and understand and also implement? Then pass number three, on a more practical level for each tab, what are the tools or activities or questions they should answer? What are my teaching points or things that I want to mention while explaining this step? Then I do a pass four and a pass five to just go through each step and add additional details like tips or extra things to consider or think about background information, stories, or examples. Then I take at least a day and complete my final sixth pass. So finally, I organize my outline and create my summary. The main points of this phase is to organize your outline, and here's how to do this. Start by creating a new list or a new Google Doc with the high-level steps or milestones of this digital product that is going to take someone through those A to B steps and all the waypoints in between. Then for each step that you have listed there, I want you to make 
three separate lists. Number one, the head. So what do you want to teach someone? What do you want them to learn? And in here, you're going to include everything that you'll talk to them about and include, including why the step matters, background information, as well as the high level how. Then number two, our second list is hands. So what are they doing? What are they doing to implement the step? What are they, you know, what does putting it into action look like? So this is going to include any specific activities, questions they'll answer um, to complete this step. And finally, heart. So what do you want them to feel as they're doing this work, as they're going through this part of the step? What are they going to be feeling, including stories or pep talks that you're going to use to inspire them to complete the step all the way through? feel free at this point to call and edit things out. The thing about a digital product is that it does not have to be complicated or include all the bells and whistles or solve a million problems. In fact, sometimes it's better if it doesn't because you don't want to include anything in there that is going to distract your customer from the main reason that they signed up. So the main purpose of this digital product, solving one specific problem, you know, is, you know, is the name of the game when it comes to your digital product, your digital product is not the same thing as a signature program or a course, although you could use the same method that I'm going through here for the individual modules or lessons in a course too. So multi-purpose. Then once you're done creating that high level summary, that detailed list, I want you to create another summary of basically your action items. What are the different pieces that you need to create when you move to the next step, which is our creation process. So this is list is going to include anything to do with tools. So templates, worksheets, checklists, whatever you plan on including in there. Then also your teaching materials, so your slides, your speaking notes, written lessons, anything that you'll be, be, be including, um, the more time, just a note here, the more time that you spend nailing your outline, the easier this phase is going to be, the easier the next phase is going to do, be because you've already done so much of the thinking through and so much of the work here. That brings us to the next step, which is the creation phase of things. So the next phase involves creating your actual content so that, well, you know, let's just just take an enormous amount of pressure off here um, because this phase is not get about getting things to look pretty. That's what our next phase, the design phase coming up is for. At this stage, we're simply focused on getting the content all out there, not that final finished product. So here's the order that I recommend following for creating your digital product content. I like to start with my tools. So my workbooks, my worksheets, my templates, then move on to the teaching materials. So the slides, the speaking notes for videos, written instructions, et cetera. The reason is this. So likely you're gonna wanna touch on the tools that you're in your teaching so that having them done first actually makes things really easy. Having thought through the process of what that worksheet is going to look like is going to make it easier to talk about it. So once you're ready to create things, step number one is to create your tools. So from the list you created in the previous phase, that summary action items list, you know, what are the tools that you want to create for people in your digital product? So these might be spreadsheets or calculators or worksheets or planners or templates or swipe files, etc. Start by drafting the content for these first. So going one by one in the order that your customers will likely be using them. The exact what will depend on what you're creating, but this could look like, you know, drafting the prompts for your worksheets, drafting, you know, the sections or fields for your templates, drafting the Mad Libs for your swipe files. In my annual content planner, just as an example here, the main tools include the planner itself, and then also the content creation workflows that help them implement their plan plan. So the planner has your annual, your quarterly, your monthly sections in there, as well as your weekly, um, and then a kind of walkthrough video. Then step two, create your teaching materials. So for each step of your digital product, each step that it's going to cover, draft what you're going to be saying or writing, depending on how you plan on delivering this. To make this less overwhelming, I like to pull out my trusty free writing process here. So for each section or each step, I like to set a timer for 25 minutes and answer the following questions. So number one, what is the step? Number two, why does this step matter? Number three, what are the most important things to know about this step? Number four, what are the common mistakes when it comes to completing the step? Number five, what's an example of the step in action to really help solidify it? And then also, how do you use the tool that goes along with the step? I rinse and repeat all of these questions and these 25-minute timers until I'm finished every 
single section. I may do this over the course of a week or two if I don't have a ton of time to work on this and dedicate it to each day. Um, usually I can finish something like this by just committing to one Pomodoro, one 25 minute sprint per day. So the teaching materials in my annual content planner, as an example here, include the annual planning process and walkthrough video, the quarterly pro planning process and walkthrough video, the monthly planning process and walkthrough video. And these are just delivered through three videos that I also have speaking notes and I'm just going, you know, just showing my screen as I'm walking through and using these different sections. So step number three of this creation phase is to take it from draft to great with my four phase editing checklist. So I use this editing process to take a maybe not so great draft that I'm kind of embarrassed to show to share to something that I cannot wait for people to read. And here's how it work. works. So the first one is to go through each section and edit for clarity and correctness. So this is where I'm reading all of the sections, making sure that everything makes sense and that there are no spelling and grammar errors, unintentional ones. That is sometimes I like to make up words and be really intentional about them. Then and next, I go through each section again, and I edit it for brand voice and personality. So this is where I add in the me-isms that make my copy sound and read more like my voice. This is where the fun comes in, the examples, references, puns, alliterations, and more. Then my third pass, I go through and edit each section for emphasis and formatting. So this is where I edit for online reading, adding more headers and subheadings, italics, bolding, bulleted lists, to make sure that the right parts of the content are being emphasized and that the content is scannable for online readers. So most people are scanners. Then finally, I let it breathe a day or two, and then I come back through and do a final proof. Or I get someone else to do this pass for me because my eyes just aren't noticing anything anymore. I've been staring at it too long. So once it's done, you're going to have something really, really great and be ready to move on to the next phase, which is the design phase. So now it's time to pretty up your product through design, just as with the previous phase, I recommending, recommend designing your tools first. So the worksheets, the templates, the calculators before doing the teaching materials. So the slides, if you're doing them, if you are using Google Docs for worksheets, templates, or workbooks, I like to start by changing the fonts for the body and the headers and the subheadings to the closest Google font for my brand guide. Then I add in colors and logos, a cover page, image, copyright information in the footer. Now, if you happen to be using Google Google Sheets for calculators or templates or trackers. I like to change the fonts first, then colors for the different fields, add a logo, copyright information, and any other styling as well. I like to change the color of the different tabs along the bottom. And then my favorite tip for just polishing the look of Google Sheets is to remove any of the excess columns at the bottom or excess rows and columns, because um, usually there's about a thousand and there's no way I'm creating a digital product with a thousand different fields in there. Now, if if you're creating like a PDF workbook, say you're using Canva or InDesign, make your life easier by starting with a template and then customizing it. So the fonts, the colors for your brand. You can go and grab great starter templates from a marketplace like Creative Market, one of my favorites. Then after you've created your template page variations, then you can simply duplicate them and add your content and images for it. If you're creating slides, I recommend using Canva since they have a ton of great templates already built in features, and then it allows you to record right from within Canva too. So just like with the workbook, start by finding and customizing your slide templates and different slide variations for your brand. Then add your content slide by slide. Finally, our delivery phase, the final step of wrapping up your digital product is to think through how you want to deliver it to your customers. So is it enough to just deliver the links through an email? Do you want to build a page on your website or add it to a membership site? Plus, think about how you can make it easier for your customers to use. So I like to think about like walkthroughs to show how the product can be used or add in checklists to make the product feel more bite-sized, right? Less overwhelming. And most importantly, what can you do to make your product more accessible by either including transcripts or speaking notes, alt text, descriptions, or audios that people can listen to on the go or read, you know, 
on the go as well. Then based on your answers to these questions, go and record any of your videos or your audios, create any checklists, and then upload your files for hosting or delivery. The final step is to write a welcome email that goes out with your product that includes gratitude for them signing up and buying your digital product, action steps to get started, an invitation to respond back and engage with you if they have any questions or thoughts or suggestions. Um, and once you do that, your product is in pretty good shape to move on to our next phase, which is going to be covered in the next part, which is getting your product ready to sell. So if you are ready to take your digital product from idea to done, it's super easy to get overwhelmed with everything that you need to create, um, create for your product, but not if you can zero in and focus on just that very next step. Take it step by step. And before you know it, all of those steps are going to add up to a finished, can't wait to share it digital product. You'll thank yourself for starting now. So here's a little recap of the phases that we covered. Number one, the outlining phase. Number two, the creation phase. Number three, the design phase. Number four, the delivery phase. And then voila, done. So download the free roadmap all about how to create and sell your digital product in the description below this video. And with that, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to be the first to know when the next video goes live, hint, it's Mondays, ring the bell. And until next time, here is to your content empire.